Hi everyone, this is BTEC Psychology, this is Unit 3 Health Psychology and we're going to be looking in this video at the initiation, the maintenance and the relapse of a smoking addiction according to the biological explanation. Now, the way initiation is explained, the start of a smoking addiction according to biology is in two ways. Firstly, genetic predisposition. So research has shown, and some of the research is coming up now, um, that there is a genetic influence on smoking. That basically means that we can inherit some genes from our parents, which makes us more likely, not definitely, because remember, genetic predisposition, remember, works in conjunction with the environment. So if we have the gene, we don't necessarily develop it, but it makes it more likely, depending on the different influences that we encounter in our environment. So that's the first thing, is that we may have a gene that makes us more likely. And these studies you can see at the bottom, they've looked at different people who are smokers and non-smokers and they found that there is certainly like a fairly decent level of influence from that you can see about 53 percent according to that top study <coughs> right the second way that the biological approach explains the start of smoking is basically that when we smoke it gives us this big rush of pleasure in our brain and you might have heard people describe that as a bit of a buzz when they smoke um, and that's a physical process that happens in our brain that's a, quite addictive actually from really early on when someone starts smoking which then hooks them into an addiction so let's have a little look at what happens in our brain when we smoke so firstly, uh, when we take a breath in with a cigarette, nicotine is absorbed through the lungs. That's the addictive uh, thing within smoking, the addictive substance. And nicotine then travels to our brain. And this first area, number one here, is called the ventral tegmental area. And nicotine uh, uh, molecules attach to receptors in that area. They're actually receptors for something known as ACH, which is a, a, a normal neurotransmitter we have in our brain but nicotine is similar shape so it's able to attach to those receptors and it starts this cascade of, of dopamine in our brain now you might have heard of dopamine before uh, it's basically a chemical in our brain that's associated with a feeling of pleasure or euphoria so what happens next is a signal is sent to an area of the brain called the nucleus accumbens. That's number two in this diagram. Um, and so dopamine and glutamate are released in that area. That's important because dopamine causes pleasure and glutamate causes a further cascade of dopamine elsewhere in the brain. So the third thing, the, the third part of our reward pathway um, is that we have more dopamine then is released into what's known as the prefrontal cortex, which is the shaded area in the diagram number three. So all of that is what we mean by there is a buzz in our brain. Basically, nicotine attaching in one area causes this big cascade of dopamine to be released in, in through this reward pathway in our brain. And we experience that as a feeling, a buzz or a feeling of euph euphoria. So that's how the, the biological approach explains the initiation of smoking, uh, either because someone has the gene for it, they're pre genetically predisposed, or because they are hooked from the very first smoke because of that dopamine rush. Right, let's look at maintenance. So the biological approach would say that nicotine um, is basically people maintain smoking because they regulate nicotine levels in their bloodstream. So basically, the, the effects of nicotine that we've just looked at last for about 20 minutes. After that time, the levels of nicotine in our bloodstream uh, drop and then someone would start to experience withdrawal symptoms. So anxiety, irritability, restlessness are all good examples of, of withdrawal symptoms someone might experience. And so they realise that the nicotine levels have dropped and they smoke again. So basically those withdrawal symptoms, that's known as nicotine regulation because someone's regulating the level of nicotine in their bloodstream by smoking. And so that causes it to carry on. And there's research support for that. Um, someone called Schachter um, gave some, uh, looked at uh, using 
different levels of nicotine in cigarettes and measuring whether that affected the amount that someone smoked. So heavy smokers in this study, they were given lighter nicotine cigarettes um, and what happened was they ended up smoking more to get the level of nicotine up. And so that supports this idea of nicotine being the thing that's having the effect here. Right, so we've had initiation, genetic predisposition and dopamine. Maintenance. So the first thing that we haven't actually yet said is that the ru that rush of dopamine acts as a reward. So that means that someone's more likely to keep doing it. The emphasis here needs to be on the biological side. Obviously, I've said the re word reward, which we use for the learning approach. But the emphasis here is that that rush of dopamine. And you'd be wanting to explain that if you were asked about maintenance that we get that those different areas of the brain all activate um, and have a big rush of dopamine and that's a reward and then the second part of maintenance that withdrawal symptoms we we uh, avoid withdrawal symptoms by regulating nicotine levels our um, ex explanation now for relapse is really similar to that actually that someone experiences withdrawal symptoms when they're trying to stop and therefore they start again and that's due to the fact that they've developed a tolerance to nicotine okay right let's look at strengths and weaknesses so our first strength of this explanation is that it's underpinned by lots of scientific research so we you can talk about things like the use of brain scans measuring of levels of, of chemicals and so on lab experiments all of all of the information we have about the way that nicotine works and and the different pathways in the brain is underpinned by lots of different scientific research so that means that we can have confidence this theory is correct. The second strength we've got is that real life applications um, come out of this theory. So because we understand the effect of nicotine on our brain, what we've been able to do is use that information to develop treatments for smoking, such as nicotine replacement therapy in the form of patches, gum, sprays and so on. And so, and actually if you use that, you're twice as likely to succeed in quitting smoking. So that's something really positive that's come out of this approach, this understanding understanding um, of of the process of smoking um, and then lastly you can talk about the research study that I mentioned before that the nicotine regulation model has research support to back it up um, and then we've got some weaknesses as well though so there are some people who uh, shacked are named chippers um, who sometimes smoke but don't get addicted they might smoke a few cigarettes a day uh, they can just stop without any consequences and so th these people uh, the, the biological approach doesn't explain why it's not so addictive for these people because it ought to be the same process for everyone so the biological approach um, it really that contradicts it or says that there's something else happening as well as the biologi biology of smoking that could be affecting those people. Um, the uh, other weakness that we've got is that although we've said that it's like a 44% or 53% genetic influence, depending on which study you talk about, that means we've also got, got quite a serious environmental influence. So you can't say that it's completely a biological explanation of smoking because we know that the environment in that sense is also having an effect. <clears throat> Um, and then the, our last weakness is that it's reducing, it's quite a simplistic theory. So it's basically saying we're nothing more than a biological process in our brain. We're just addicted and that's all there is to it. We can't control it. Uh, so we're reducing it down to a really simple, uh, simple theory in our brains. Um, and that assumes that if we're just a product of our physical urges, that we don't have any free will, which most of us would have an issue with that statement. So that was the biological explanation for smoking.